Hello there. Welcome to Changing Shapefile Properties in QGIS. This will be another quick video where I show you how to adjust the properties of your shapefiles, show them as a single color, or use categorized symbols, graduated symbols, adjust the transparency, or label them. So here we go. Uh, I've got a project already underway where we created a shapefile uh, called Lakes and Ponds. It has a bunch of polygon features, and I traced over some lakes and ponds near Middlebury. Now, if my goal is to make a nice map, uh, I may not want these to be gray. I may want them to be a light blue or partially transparent. So I want to show you how to change the properties of this shapefile now. It's very easy. You just right-click on the, the shapefile, lakes and ponds, then you go to Properties, and you'll notice that uh, there's a whole slew of properties you can adjust over here on the left. The one we go to here is uh, Symbology, Control Feature Symbology. And right at the very top, there's a bunch of choices. Single Symbol, Categorized, Graduated, Rule-Based, Inverted Polygons. We're going to look at these first three right now. So sing, single symbol is the easiest. You just assign all the features to the same color. I usually click on this second uh, subset here, and I can change the fill color to be uh, any color that I want. I'm going to pick a blue here. And I won't show you, but there's lots of ways to pick various colors and color wheels and all kinds of stuff. So you can have fun with that. Um, you can also pick different patterns as well, which is really cool. We'll stay solid for now. Um, stroke uh, is the line around the polygon. So for lakes, I usually actually make that transparent um, because I don't want to show a border. But of course, if you do want to show a border, you can adjust the width of it, uh, whether it's solid, dashed, and so on. It's really pretty handy. Okay, so I'm going to hit Apply, and we'll get a preview of what that looks like. Hey, there's some nice blue lakes. Perfect. Okay, now suppose we don't want all the lakes to be the same color. Uh, suppose, for example, we have the lakes categorized, maybe into two groups, lakes you can swim in and lakes you can't swim in, for example. Um, if we have these kind of categorized data, we might use a categorized symbology. So. I'll first choose uh, a field in the attribute table that has my categorical designations. So in this case, I'm going to use ID. And as it turns out, I gave all my lakes a unique ID. So when I hit this classify button down here, it, each of my nine lakes has a different ID value. But of course, if, if I had grouped them into only two different groups, then I would only show up with two colors here. In any event, if I hit Apply, it will assign each of those lakes a different unique color, depending how many unique categories you have. And of course, if you want a different set of colors, you can adjust uh, to a different color ramp here um, or a different uh, base color. OK, so what if now you actually have, uh, you want to color your lakes by some kind of continuously varying measurement, like the phosphorus concentration in your lake, for example, where it's not categorized, but it could be any value across a range. For that, we would use uh, what we call graduated symbology. So again, going back to the top and switching to graduated. Um, again, we would choose whatever field has our data in it. In this case, it's only giving me numeric fields. Notice those are denoted by the one, two, three. Uh, so again, I'll just choose ID, um, and in this case, when I hit classify, I can first choose how many classes I want to break my data down into. So let's say I'm going to break it into three groups, and here, here it showed me three different groups, uh, which are colored now by their value, um, and each is given a different color. So I'll hit apply. And there you have that. But red is a terrible color for lakes. So let's go back to blue, hit apply again. And uh, 
the final thing I want to show you is, or semi-final, is how to make this transparent. If you go down to layer rendering here, you get this opacity slider bar that lets you actually adjust the transparency. So I'm gonna do that, move that and hit apply, and actually my lakes had been partially transparent. There they are, now they're not transparent anymore at all. Whenever you're happy with your symbology, you hit okay. Final thing I'll show you is maybe you wanna label your features. Again, that's gonna take us back. We're gonna right click on the, the shape file, properties, and we're gonna go to this next symbol down. This is the label button. And let's say we have single labels in this case. Again, you have to choose a value that you wanna label based on. Name seems like a good choice. Um, then you can specify all the different uh, fonts and colors and all this and that. I'm gonna make mine white actually, cause that might show up better. And I'll hit apply. And there, all of my lakes are now labeled. Lots of options you can explore with labeling as well. Thanks for listening, everybody, and happy shape filing.